include state or local information or even census data that can be sort of a good way to get background information about a population or something like that. So if we kind of like take these two schemes and cross-hash them, we get four different categories of data that I think are helpful to really think through when you're, when you're addressing a data needs um, assessment. Because you can see sort of whether the data they have falls into one of these categories and where the data they need falls into these categories. So just a few things to think about when you're thinking about each of these categories. If you have a one-time data need that's internally produced, it's good to use whatever tools you're comfortable using, if it's R, if it's GIS, if it's Excel, whatever you feel comfortable with. But do think about the fact that these could, down the road, become a recurring data need. And that it's very important still to document your methodology so that if there's ever a question about where these numbers came from, people can go back and see exactly what you did. Um, in terms of externally produced data, this is where you should use like all of your research skills. This could be, you know, just because it's you're thinking about data doesn't mean you necessarily need a data set. If there's some number that they need, there might be like a scholarly research study where someone went and took a sample and did some sort of analysis and came up with the number you're looking for. So it doesn't necessarily, it's not always going to be like a data set that says, okay, for Washtenaw County, this, like, the cost of doing X is, is this. Like, that data set might just not exist, but there might be someone who did a research study in Washington County or did a research study in a similar county that could produce estimates that would be helpful. Um, and once again, you should use whatever tools you like, but be very careful about documenting your methodology and your, um, and your sources and tools. So I have a though a lot of the questions you're going to be addressing are going to be in this recurring data so one thing to think about for internally produced data is think about the organization and the collection. Does it lend itself to analysis? Is it easy to go from the collection to the analysis without adding a lot of additional steps for people? And also think about how it's organized um, in terms of the questions that are asked and these kind of things. Um, I can also share these slides with everyone who's, I assume, taking pictures of this chart. Um, I think we can send it out somehow. Um, and then also, it's very important to think about the costs and benefits of gathering more data. If an organization says, we'd really like to know this, but it's something that's going to take a team of 10 people to, to sort of develop, then there might be other recommendations you can make that are less costful on the organization. Um, because especially working with nonprofits, a lot of them are sort of you know, completely strapped for time and money and these kind of things, and, and using as much as possible to sort of achieve whatever their mission is. And so it's so you have to be very careful about balancing the costs of additional data collection or data analysis. And then when it comes to externally produced data, your, your sort of your gut instinct might be to say, okay, let's go out and find this data. But what you want to think more about is actually creating a process so that the organization can continually find that data and update that data as it changes over time. Um, and once again, you should be aware of the resources that are available to the organization. And then also, I think it's really important here to think about how this process can be updated. I think we tend to, when we're dealing especially with government-produced data, to assume that it's always going to be produced in the exact same way and be accessible in the exact same way. But because of funding issues, this is rarely the case. Oftentimes, the access to different data sets changes every two or three years. 